Kakoa Pau, the Kaiopua Fife again with the Kowani Foundation, Voices of Truth one on one with Hawaii's future. Uh, again, we're here on the grounds of uh, Hawaii Prep Academy in Waimea on Big Island, uh, talking to a lot of people here from Hoea Art Project, which will uh, be more than happy to have. Uh, Hiko Hanapi, tell us all about. Hiko, mahalo for being with us. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting us in. Uh, I'm glad we could get you to break away from yeah. <laughs> trying to catch up with your project in there. And uh, we'd kind of like to uh, have you kind of introduce yourself, give us a little background. I know we worked together years ago right. on the uh, Hui Nawa project and so forth, and we got a glimmer of your creative abilities there and administrative abilities. And I guess uh, they're coming into uh, full use on this current project here. But let us know who you are. Hiko, tell our, tell our folks. Well, uh, my name is uh, Hiko Ula Hanapi. Hiko Ula means this is my day. It's uh, about a seventh generation name that um, the original bearer was from Kauai, Koloa on Kauai. And that's on my grandmother's side. And um, born and raised in Honolulu, uh, attended all the way up from Hawaii Kai, the uh, uh, Lunalila Elementary, Neo Valley Intermediate, Kalani High School grad in 1973. And I've done about five years of uh, college, UH, Manoa, as well as up at uh, Reno, uh, University of Nevada, Reno. Um, went to school, my academic background was botany, but I've uh, had uh, quite a bit of um, uh, art training. Started young um, and have used it throughout my career. I've uh, done a lot. I've worked for uh, National Park Service. I've worked for the Department of Education um, and worked for many uh, nonprofit organizations in Native Hawaiian culture and arts. Mm -hmm. And back, as you've mentioned, Kaiopuo, uh, Hui Na Awau, the um, community education project on sovereignty and self determination for mm -hmm. Native Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, a huge project uh, done by the administration of uh, Native Americans through the Department of Health, Human uh, Welfare, uh, U.S. And this project itself, Hoea, means uh, we have arrived, if you say it one way. It also means let's begin. And um, Hoea has been uh, a long sought vision and it's found a home here in Waimea, in South Kohala, on the Big Island. And we're excited about this project. It's the uh, first of its kind. And uh, it involves uh, a post-secondary level of education. Um, and it's uh, sort of like the follow-up to our Native Hawaiian charter schools. Now we're moving into post-secondary or college level. Mm -hmm. And as a, a way of uh, being able to have our youth and our young adults um, participate through the arts. And this one is a fine art program but it has a very um, different kind of curriculum. Uh, it's geared more towards um, uh, earning potential, a high earning potential art form. Uh, the four classes or disciplines, um, we have two of uh, contemporary and two of our Native Hawaiian uh, disciplines. Uh, the two contemporary is jewelry making and print making. And then we have uh, um, uh, Hawaiian umeke, the Hawaiian style of uh, bowl turning, uh, as well as now we're, uh, we have Saul Appeal, our master Hawaiian artist um, our, um, for our woods, and he's working also on making kapa implements. Uh, our other Hawaiian discipline is kapa making for this year. Um, next year, we're going to keep the other three disciplines, jewelry making, um, print making, and woodwork, and we will have feather work, and oh. we're hoping to have Paulette Kahalapuna, mm -hmm. uh, Kilohana Domingo, um, and several others uh, to join for that one. And then in our last year of this three-year project, uh, which also is from the administration of the Native Americans, also the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, the uh, Richard Smart Fund, which is from Waimea, mm -hmm. um, and in that last year we'll be looking at weaving. Now, what is so unique about this is that we brought um, 115 artists in 2007 to the Pico Gathering, which was a concept that came from New Zealand uh, by Sandy Adsit. And what it did, it, it brought uh, artists, uh, native peoples, native artists from around the Pacific Rim 
We had 38 uh, Maori artists. We had um, artists from, Melani uh, from uh, Melanesia, uh, Australia, Torres Straits, and Papua New Guinea. And we also had um, Native American artists, uh, 20 of them, um, that represented Alaska, Canada, the North and Southwest uh, mm -hmm. areas of the United States. Mm -hmm. And they came, our agenda or uh, our reason for having that gathering was to um, find the talent for this particular project of Hoea. And so we are using the artists that we felt were able, uh, they were high um, caliber, talented artists. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this year we have Stacy Gordine from Aotearoa. Uh, we're looking at two other Maori artists to bring in that were at Pico. Mm -hmm. And the majority of our artists are Hawaiian artists. And uh, we have what we call the Imi Haku approach, which is a traditional Hawaiian educational approach of mentorship. Mm -hmm. and. Our two Hawaiian disciplines, for example, in the kapa making, we had Terry uh, Rivera. This week we have Saber Kauka, um, and then uh, Johnny May Makua Kanijero, and Marie McDonald, uh, esteemed kapa maker. Her daughter Rowan Hufford, also mm -hmm. um, a master, mm -hmm. um, come in once a week on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. and uh, they join up with the others. And this is the mentorship. Um, we're not using just one instructor for these Hawaiian-based courses, but we're using many. That's what I thought was so interesting, yeah. Not all knowledge is uh, housed within one, one school or one, one uh, instructional entity. I thought that was really nice because one of the things uh, Sabre mentioned last night was uh, when the Kumu get together, they're, they're really students themselves and they're mm -hmm. learning as much from the interaction among themselves and even with the with the students i mean the the level of uh, artistry and the students that are here is amazing i mean a yes. lot of them can be doing mentoring at their level and down uh, and probably are you know and they will where be. they are yeah that's amazing um so this is a huge concept so pico in 2007 mm -hmm. in pico was like uh, the audition for the talents to bring forward to continue. Yes. Now, this is a long range perspective. I think this is really interesting because in looking at the brochure uh, on the project, Hoya project, uh, you have some pretty, pretty demanding uh, expectations of yourselves over the next several it's years. An, it's huh? an intensive. Yeah. And <laughs> we, um, we put that out there to the community that it's mm -hmm. intensive. Mm -hmm. And the, the hours that uh, these students get um, and again, our target um, population range is 17 years old to um, Kupuna. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, we have uh, um, one mentor, Mary McDonald, who is uh, 80. Mm -hmm. And we have some other uh, students that are in, the, that are in their 70s. Mm -hmm. And then our youth, uh, our youngest is a 17-year-old who goes to Kanawaka Aina, which is a Native Hawaiian charter school here in Waimea. Sure. Well, that's uh, it's quite a breadth of... Uh life experience and education yes. and, and uh, <laughs> creativity. You know, it's uh, it's just obviously just flowing. When I got in last night and we came back down later on, you know, you have your your eight to five component, I guess. And yes. then, then there's the after dinner. Uh, the open studio time. Yeah, open studio. And I guess that's when they have to really concentrate on getting their projects done, huh? Yes, the open studio they have. You have some really stiff ex expectations of the students, yes, right? Yes, we do. Well, the curriculum is product-based, mm -hmm. so each instructor brings with them uh, um, the types of products. Uh, if it's printmaking, uh, various kinds of printmaking, um, you have to have uh, the various types of prints. And, um, and for like the stone carving with uh, Hanalei Hafei, mm -hmm. there are two poi pounders, the traditional and the kawaii style. Mm -hmm. And he's also doing a kukui heli po, which is uh, ca um, the candle holder, which mm -hmm. will be made of stone. Mm -hmm. but by the end, uh, our curriculum uh, is made up, as I said, high earning potential disciplines. Mm -hmm. uh, the structure of the, uh, uh, the program itself is it's a studio program right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a four week studio program in the summer. And then uh, everybody returns in December for two weeks. But in between, uh, the students work for their um, criteria. And in, in building this, uh, the criteria is basically you have to attend every day. Uh, by the end of the year, you uh, attain, you achieve 240 hours worth of instruction from all four of the uh, programs. Mm -hmm. But then you <clears> also <throat> have to give back. Mm -hmm. And this is really an important concept. Um, many of the funders, many of the grantors that give us money, 
we usually, in many cases, we just take the money and implement a project. Right. But in this case, one of the uh, criteria for certification, you have to go back into the community and teach. So every one of our students who receive a, um, a scholarship mm -hmm. um, uh, for their tuition and so forth, they'll go back into their communities mm -hmm. and they'll teach, they'll teach for uh, nothing mm -hmm. because they have to meet that criteria for mm -hmm. 10 hours. Mm -hmm. This Hoya project is first built upon education. We have uh, workshops on the art of business, so uh, they get market training uh, and they also go into the uh, um, economic or the uh, literacy art program uh, for, um, for doing their business. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a market. Mm -hmm. And we're implementing a, um, an annual Hoea arts market, which will be for Native Hawaiians to come. And we've uh, structured many of these things, like the open studio program right. is something that the Maoris have learned uh, when they do their programs, where the families and friends can come after school mm -hmm. and join them while they're working. Mm -hmm. And that's one aspect that mm -hmm. we like. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other program is, um, is the market that I just mentioned. And what we're doing with that is that we're looking at the Indian market at Santa Fe, New Mexico and uh, how successful that has been. Um, this year will be their 88th annual. Mm -hmm. And um, we have received funding from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to send 20 of us up uh, for a feasibility study on how we can translate that here. Mm -hmm. So our Hawaii market, which will take place October 1st to the 4th in this coming fall, uh, is four days. And we're looking at the same kind of structure that uh, the Southwestern American Indian um, Association, SWAYA, who does the, they're a nonprofit mm -hmm. who is doing the Indian market there. And um, the Hoya market, our students, part of their criteria, they have to help us uh, implement the market. Um, we're hoping to have a, a film festival, a concert, um, and then the most important part of the market is two days of boots of the fine arts. So um, many of our instructors and those that will be joining us in the years to come will come to support this project. Mm -hmm. And at Indian Market in Santa Fe, um, uh, there are many artists who go there every year and they sell everything that they have. And for many of these artists, uh, that's their one time in the year, that's their annual income. Mm -hmm. So they sell what they have, uh, they make what they need to survive for the year. And, and then, then they go back to work. And they work until the next market. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to implement that with our Hoya project. Well, you know, that's, um the concept of uh, teaching the business skills, you know, for years I've uh, used to be affiliated somewhat with music, you know, and there's mm -hmm. lots of talent, unlimited talent, but very few people who could apply the business disciplines that uh, really can create a successful, successful career. And you know, we have so many good artists, you know, I mean, there's a lot of creativity, but to have the discipline and the the knowledge, the awareness of how to be able to sustain yourself, which means you have long periods of time when you're doing nothing but working at your art. Yes. So I can appreciate, you know, when you mentioned this one sales opportunity a year, I think of the potlatch, uh, the yes. potlatches that they used to, and you, everything comes into that and everybody trades and then you go back and start all over again. Yes. And I think it's a great, great concept. So it's like, the starving artist maybe isn't acceptable. You don't need to be a starving artist. You need to be a smart artist. And in addition productive to being productive, and yeah, productive and 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 smart about how you do things. Uh, I mean, there there are schools that teach people how to manage artisans. Yes, I, I think maybe that's a good thing. Uh, but it really, the artist needs to know how to survive and how to prosper and I think that's that's a really important component of this uh, this workshop here I noticed the hat yeah <laughs> <laughs> when we came in out of the out of the sun you took the hat <laughs> off but I mean that looks like a little work of art itself there it is it's not la hola no and you um, the value of this is incredible if you go into the communities and try to mm -hmm. to buy them but you mentioned the potlatch I mm -hmm. just returned from a, a three-week, which should have been a 10-week artist residency mm -hmm. that I was awarded to the Longhouse uh, Education Culture Center at Evergreen State College in mm -hmm. Olympia, Washington. It was an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, the outpouring, they have aloha there. Yeah. Uh, we are now setting up a, uh, um, oh, what do you call that? 
an uh, artist residency exchange. So for them because to come I over. was the first Hawaiian artist that yeah. was uh, uh, given a, an award to do a residency there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was incredible. But we have many partners. The Ford Foundation has helped us with Pico. Mm -hmm. But I think what was key was that uh, Hawaiians, um, what we learned by doing that gathering that was the Maori concept, right. is that we've taken our art to a new uh, level. Right. We're now involving indigenous art communities, uh, indigenous artists as instructors, as well as uh, partnering for programs like the residency mm -hmm. and other things. They have a new uh, Native Art Foundation, uh, which was uh, partly funded. Uh, an endowment of $10 million was given for this new foundation for the, um, for the United States for Native Arts. And what's interesting is that... Where did that funding come from? Uh, from the Ford Foundation. Oh, my goodness. They gave $10 million as an endowment to start them off. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to raise $80 million. Now, the most important thing and, and that for Hawaiians is that the Native American Indian arts has been around for many, many years, many decades, mm -hmm. over 100 years. Mm -hmm. But they selected a Native Hawaiian to be the first CEO. Isn't of this Native Art Foundation. My goal is to try and get the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to donate uh, or to help Contribute add to that, towards, in, in uh, yeah. that endowment. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, we need to, because Native Hawaiians will be accessible to those funds. You know, years, I don't forget how many years ago, it was maybe six or seven years ago, we were up in British Columbia, Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, we were with affiliated with uh, Roselle Bailey's Hula yes. in Kauai at that time, and of course she had all these connections internationally. And we were invited to go to British Columbia. Uh, they were preparing for the World World Games. Um, oh yes, and I remember they that. were going to be hosting. Uh, you know, it's a British uh, uh, UK, United Kingdom's uh, equivalents, I guess, of uh, oh, the well, the World Games uh, from from among all of their participating. Uh, states and countries, and so we went up on the mark, uh, the anniversary, previous anniversary, one year advance, to see how they were planning to participate because the First Nations up there were going to do the protocol, traditional protocol. Mm -hmm. They also had a, a voyage of canoes. Oh, which came from beautiful. way up north in Alaska, from down up the west coast of uh, North America, and they all converged in Victoria, mm. British Columbia. So what they needed to do, was that some of them didn't have canoes, so they had to build them. So I mean, this is a, <laughs> a, a big project to begin with, but one of the things we learned in staying with, on some of the reserves there with some of the tribes, was the level of, uh, that they'd taken their art to. It mm -hmm. was just amazing. You know, they had their traditional, but they also had contemporary. And they had their art centers. You know, they had multimedia centers to tell their stories. And they had very, they were sustaining themselves. They were doing really well at it. And this, I'm talking, you know, seven, eight years ago, they were already at that point. Right. And uh, Hawaii has a ways to go, but at least we're, I think we're headed in that direction. Right. Now. Well, what we're doing is that uh, we have a three-phase uh, community vision. Um, and the first phase is this project, Hoea, for the three years. Uh, we're um, building an infrastructure for this community mm -hmm. of Waimea. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at the Native Hawaiian, um, uh, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, or mm -hmm. um, the homesteads. And our plan is in the first phase is to do this uh, infrastructure building. The second phase is to build a community art center in a Hawaiian homestead that will provide uh, jobs and employment for the Hawaiians in that community mm -hmm. to maintain uh, and facilitate programs. But mm -hmm. the Community Art Center would have our own galleries. Mm -hmm. We'll have studios like what we're doing here um, that will be um, open to everyone, mm -hmm. not just Hawaiians, mm -hmm. but uh, to everyone uh, as a sustainable component, uh, mm -hmm. an economic opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then once we have the Community Art Center, uh, then we're going to take this uh, studio program and move it towards accreditation for a four-year um, college. Uh, where you can get credit, mm -hmm. and it'll be a Native Hawaiian art school. So it will be a Hawaiian community-based program. And then our ultimate goal is that the members from these Hawaiian homelands, um, they'll come, they'll learn what they want to learn, and then they'll, they'll see the state-of-the-art equipment that they'll need, mm -hmm. and they'll go back to their homes and build their own studios. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at a fine art 
cottage industry in the Hawaiian homes. Mm -hmm. So that's our, um, our goal right there. And this is the beginning. In 2004, we held a panel discussion on defining Hawaiian art. Mm -hmm. And it was at that panel discussion we had um, uh, uh, Kupuna Nona Beamer, um, uh, John Lake, mm -hmm. um, uh, we also had Marie McDonald, we had Pua Kanaheli, uh, her sister Nalani, mm -hmm. Kanaka Oli, um, and a few others from our community. And um, it was there that it was determined that uh, we needed to have our own schools. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it actually began in 2004. Yeah. Well, you know, we uh, going back to, and this is kind of shifting, we're looking at the same kind of a big concept, but when um, Native Hawaiian Education Council first began, several years ago. Uh, you know, our mission, the, the mission, the, the vision actually that we saw was in place, a thriving Native Hawaiian education system. Mm -hmm. And so as things evolved, I, 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 and from my perspective, I, I saw the charter school, partic particularly Nale Naoao, uh, Native Hawaiian charter schools, as becoming evolving into that element, yes. and this is uh, this is additional to that, yes. and taking it even further on the higher higher education yep. end. This is uh, you know it it really takes big thinking early on and persistence to make these things happen, and it's a, and it's a long haul approach, but that's the only thing that lasts. You know the flash in the pan things are great. I know you mentioned. Uh, a lot of projects get the money, spend the money, everybody everybody disappears and nobody knows what happens and there's no outcome. And it's such a waste because, uh, you know, the energy and time involved, it's not just about getting the money, it's making darn good use of it and making sure that you leverage it yep. into the future so that the project, if it's viable, lives beyond the, <laughs> the, the funding period, you know? It will be. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, this is a... a um, an interesting um, development because uh, we thought we had several years. So this is the first time that we um, uh, gave a, a grant um, uh, or we received a grant. We wrote a grant and then um, uh, didn't expect to receive it. We thought we'd need it several years, but we received it. And then we had to um, uh, do this grant. But the Administration for Native Americans I believe that uh, they saw the potential of this project. Mm -hmm. And we're in a huge economic downturn right now. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time that many people have heard where um, when we wrote the grant, we had a specific budget. But when uh, they told us that uh, they were seriously considering to fund this one, they gave us more money than we asked for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was incredible. So mm -hmm. I believe that you know what you said is true. Um, you know. We need to build upon this, and uh, we know that uh, sustainability is critical. Mm -hmm. You've probably had a level of experience with this scope of project that probably made them pretty comfortable that it was going to get accomplished. Mm -hmm. Just needed a little extra money, and yes. that's that is that is amazing. When you, uh, I mean, mostly it's a scramble, scramble. What can we do to get this? I've always thought that the best grant is one or grant proposal is really the one that serves the needs of the uh, proposing entity, not just matches the funder's right. guidelines, but when the two can meet, it's, it's a, a fantastic thing to happen. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I know it's going to be a success, and I think a lot of the young people who are here, you know, through, through this period, uh, are going to be a major component of make that happen. Well, they've signed on. They've, yes, they've they contracted have. to it, haven't they? Yes. <laughs> and um, it is a success. I mean, uh, the unknown is always something. And, but when you really think about it, that's really art, too. Because you take nothing and you create it into something. Right, right. And what we have right here was we started with nothing, but now um, these particular students are going to move it to something. Mm -hmm. And um, we're looking forward to... Um, uh, to see uh, what that takes shape. Yeah. Well, it does. It takes a lot of uh, intestinal fortitude and uh, kind of an obsessive type of uh, character to just forge ahead 
into the unknown. I mean, you can you can foresee what you want to do, but how you're going to get there. But if you don't start at some point, yes. you're never going to get there. Well, I've got the great faith that uh, you're going to accomplish. Uh, you and everybody else who contributes to this and the supportive community, which I know exists, that this is going to come out to be a, a major, major thing for, in the long run, not just the Hawaiian community, but education in Hawaii and really world-class art. Yes, that's what we're hoping. Yeah. Well, Hiko, mahalo nui for being with us. I'm, I'm glad you Thank could you. break away. Yes. And I, I know you have to get back because yes, you, you too have objectives <laughs> to meet. <laughs> so, and you've got to complete yours. I'm the fly on the yeah. wall. Yeah. Well, mahalo again. I hope you folks enjoyed this. And uh, if we have some budding artists out there, creative people, there's hope. Uh, get involved. Find out who's doing things. Find out what you need to do and, and, and make it happen. That's what this is all about. Once again, Kaiopua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation, Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future, a component of Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Ahui ho.